like he's going to sit down. <laughs> She's supposed to keep me moving here, because Jonathan said I had to be quick. This is our farm. We, we live in Dorchester County in Madison, uh, 106 acres, and about half of it's field, and, and the other half is, is timber. And, and we use a multiple use uh, management. These are all the things that we use our farm for. See, wildlife habitat, everything we do on the farm, we keep wildlife in mind. One on the left is in 1972. It was a, just a piece of cut over woodland and it was a mess. It's the same road. Yeah, that road right there. <laughs> yeah, so it it's a, looks a little different now. And, and that's our plan is to leave it better than we found it. And, Believe me, it wasn't hard to do. <laughs> well, the reason I like that picture on the left is I was not part of your course. And that's how we found the farm. And I think that's just to it and it's evolved and has a wonderful vision. That's what we I had no idea. I bought the property just because I wanted my own hunting property and I had no idea what to do to take care of it. So my best advice is get educated. And there's, these are the areas that I went to. Um, I wear a lot of different hats today. This is one of my favorites. And I think you've all probably heard today, this is where it starts with the management plan. So your DNR forester is, is uh, he's gonna be your primary contact. We're really using a, a sustainable forestry management it's basically as long-term farming you know we don't get an annual crop like like crop the grain farmers do but uh, you know it's harvest reforest manage it and harvest it again so over the years we've done two bigger harvests yeah <laughs> the the top the top right picture was the first harvest um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> And down on the bottom right picture, you can see on the, the left there, you can see that's back, it's a young forest now, it's about 25 years old. Reforestation, uh, the first harvest we had a little bit of problem getting it reestablished. We live in a very wet area and our, our seedling survival rate was like 247 trees per acre, which was bad. We, we wanted at least 400. So. In 1990, uh, most of you have heard, from Glatt, heard of Glattfelter. They actually gave me the seedlings to replant that area. And it's, you know, it's no strings attached. It's just a great marketing technique. Because when it came time to thin those trees, you know who I called. <laughs> uh, the picture on the right was our, our most recent reforestation. We were talking at, at dinner. 14, I think they were mostly Guatemalan. They rolled through that in three hours and planted 14 acres. It, it was just amazing to watch them. It's all hand planted. So it's just, you know, timber stand improvement, it just, it makes dollars, improves habitat, and it just makes sense. Uh, the, the residual trees that are left for future saw timber are in better shape. Uh, you open up the, the floor, you let a lot of undergrowth for wildlife. These are all the timber stand improvement projects that, that we've done. Uh, some of them you're able to make a little money, some of them cost you a little money. But the ones that we had to, to pay for, there's cost share assistance. Anytime you do anything, check on cost share assistance. Because there's a program out there for you. It's either federal or state. I don't think uh, well, they haven't passed the whole farm bill yet, but I think the equip is still viable at the moment. Uh, most recently, we used the, the WIP program for the state program with the free commercial thinning. I'll, I'll touch on some of this. Some of our spraying was done either by helicopter in the more open areas. Other areas we did, uh, the guy went through on a four-wheeler spraying. Uh, most, our most recent was done with just backpacks walking and the reason for that was that uh, we did not want to spray the oak sprouts so we went through and sprayed the gums and maples and, 
and we, we were trying to recover the oaks, and that's what I was doing here on the lower right. Thinning, thinning that woods out, the one on the top left, is that's how they used to do it. That was back in the 80s with a one man and a chainsaw, and um, it, it, they, they cut it up into five-foot bolts. Uh, today, they just cut the whole tree and take it out. <clears throat> what we did uh, on our last thinning, before we actually called to have it thinned out, we were selling pound net poles. Lot, lots of commercial fishermen along the bay, and, and they need these poles to put their nets up. To give you an idea, we don't get, have much of a market for pulpwood where we live. We were getting $3 a ton for pulpwood. The pound net poles we were selling for $2.50 to $3 a piece. So, much more lucrative. Loblolly pine. The lower right is what it looked like when they got done with this inning. So the, the impacts, you know, that's, we're maintaining diverse habitat. We have three different age classes of, of uh, pine. We're meeting our goals. Or we're making a little money. and We've had hundreds and I don't even know how many hundreds of people have toured our farm over the years. Uh, of course, we're improving the forest resource for the future, and, and we're having a ball. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we decided, they decided. Actually, one of them was the minister of forestry in Yeah. So he was like the head, like the head honcho. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah
But I, I really like one-on-one -on -one when possible. When you get a big group, there's always other conversations going on when you're trying to explain something. So I think you, people lose lose something because of the distraction. But the one-on-one, -on -one you really get you can explain, and people have your full attention. And um, Jonathan said we we were 2014 tree farmers of the year. Got to got to go to Annapolis. And these these are. Jonathan asked me to, to kind of point some lessons learned over the years. And like I said, your project forester, he's gonna be your main point of contact. He's just a wealth of information. And if he don't know the answer, he can sure find out for you. Uh, keep your property lines marked. Uh, the light blue paint, we mark on both sides of the tree, on the outside of the line and the inside, so that our, our hunters, they know not you know works both ways written goals and make a plan just know that mother nature is going to throw you a curve and we've we've had to fight uh gypsy moths uh the last harvest we did we, uh, you may have noticed we left some big oaks scattered out in there back to back hurricane we left about a hundred of those big oaks for mast back to back hurricanes irene and sandy took down 30 of them so that's what I that's why I was trying to recover those oaks uh, <clears throat> and I learned another lesson we d had a issue with fusiform rust in our young pines and uh, I found out that they they like these some of these young oak trees as hosts in their life cycle they pass these spores back and forth so <clears throat> but I'm not giving up my oak trees I don't I don't care so we, that's when we went through and, and did our pre-commercial thinning and, and cut out as many of those trees as we could find. I think we got probably 99% of them. Um, I think you had somebody here talking about conservation easements. We, we've got a conservation easement on most of our farm with the, the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy and uh, Maryland Environmental Trust uh, since 1992. And uh, the thing I want to point out is just, you know, if you're contemplating that to make sure that that you're still you or whoever owns your property in the future is, is able to manage that timber it's a it's the only renewable resource we have and it's it, to me it doesn't make sense to lock it up it, it, it doesn't hurt to keep managing it for the resource and and lastly look for for ecotourism opportunities I, we just mentioned that uh, we've just put a part of our place on Airbnb and it, we're, we're looking at it, we're, we're gathering people that are coming to our, for the farm experience and we're able to share this message with them. And uh, so we, we're uh, uh, real active as far as Maryland Woodland Stewards and the Tree Farm Committee. And those, those, the wood, water, wildlife and recreation on that tree farm sign, it's, that's what you all are doing right here. So, uh, you know, it just goes hand in hand. So. We're out of here.